As I'm dying, I discovered that I have pie in the freezer, which is the best discovery I've made all year. Oh, oh, oh. Yeah. Hi! <coughs> I'm okay. Brain. Hello, people of the internet. This is Josh Wilson with my triumphant return to blogging. More like my pathetic return to blogging. Just letting you guys know that I'm still alive, barely. So let me tell you a tale of my patheticness in everyday life. I have begun work at a call center. I like money. It's not a bad job. It pays better than most places around here. When I told my Filipino friends, they were really excited about it because in the Philippines, that's the dream job. Of course, in America, it's kind of the hellhole job, but it's okay. Today, I had my long shift and I was debating whether I should go into work or not because I'm dying. <coughs> but I did anyway. And as you can imagine from my rampant coughing, I did so well today. I'm like, hello, my name is Josh Wilson, mute. <coughs> Unmute. Would you like to take a survey about Petco? <coughs> that was all day. The Petco one was the easy one. The hardest one we did today was... Was it the one about Barack Obama repeating his name and his sentence like 500 times? Yes. We said that same question about 30 times. Not an exaggeration. <laughs> and the part with Obama was verbatim every time. So what I started doing, even though this is unkosher, I would read the Republican statement and then I would say, or do you agree with Barack Obama with the same statement as before? <laughs> I saved so much time, I was the top dialer for that whole interview. I freaking watch that. <laughs> I saw it. I testified. In Morhau, I was dying. I was about to explode for the entire six hours. So it came to about hour four, and I decided I wanted to go buy some cough drops. Great idea, right? So I go up to the supervisor, and I ask him if I can go on my break, and he says no. Curse you, supervisor. He wasn't very nice about it either. It's the bald guy. The one who has the bald man complex. Yes. As I walk back to my desk, I say to myself, you can't act like a douche because you work here. We all work here. So after my break, this other guy comes and sits next to me, and we're doing the same survey. This man with a rather feminine voice, and he keeps making comments to me about how biased the survey is towards straight men and women who are married. It's whatever. But then he keeps talking to me more and more, like every time he's not talking to someone on the phone. And it's cool, just like talk to the people next to you at work. But then he starts saying things like, so do you have a girlfriend? His words exactly. He said, can I have a piece of gum? And I gave him a piece of gum. And he said, are there date rape drugs in this gum for your girlfriend? <laughs> no, are you serious? And then I said, no. And he says, are there date rape drugs in this gum for your ex-girlfriend? And I said, no. And then he said, are there date rape drugs in this gum for your roommates? <laughs> so I told him, no, this is my private stash. I have another case of gum for my roommates. Anyway, whatever. I left right after that because my shift was over. And that guy was weird. And that guy was weird. It brings the question to my mind, how does a homosexual person find other homosexual people? Is that the standard approach? Or do they just have some kind of sense? Do they have gaydar? Do they have gaydar? And with my high nasally voice in the state that it is, maybe I have triggered his gaydar. Yep. <laughs>
so that was my day today. Oh, also I went to the store and I bought lots of drugs. Date rape drugs. For the gay guy. <laughs> call center. To sum up, call center good. Flu, bad. Cancer, worse. But not my problem. Date rape drugs, not for use at work. And also, flu messes with gaydar. I'm going to go curl up in a ball and die. Josh strikes again! The end. Ow. Pain. Lots of pain.